My name is my name is Nermin Durakovic. I'm born in ex Yugoslavia, uh, what we today consider uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, or the part uh, that is today Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, I have been living in Denmark since 1993, and uh, I'm an artist uh, living in Copenhagen, working in Copenhagen. I uh, I was have a job in TV in Syria. Uh, I do many uh, serious uh, drama and short. Uh, shorts film and uh, many many shows uh, theaters in the Syria. I live here uh, alone uh, because I I don't have uh, contact with my father. Um, I'm continued my my life uh, here. Maybe I think I'm part from uh, uh, from here from Denmark because I have a job. Uh, in Channel TV and uh, I have two programs in uh, radio. Maybe I, I, I'm continued my, my dream here in Denmark. In the midst of the busy streets of Copenhagen, a mix of people from all different backgrounds and cultures walk side by side. Included in the crowds could be refugees that have made a new home in Denmark and have started lives, families and careers. Nerman Durovokic is one of these people, an artist who rents a studio in Inner Copenhagen which he shares with other experts in his field. Born in former Yugoslavia, Nerman fled Bosnia when he was 13 years old to Denmark with his family. He has since made a living creating artwork, most recently a popular exhibition called Northern Insularity. The Bosnian artist has reconstructed cold rooms typical of refugee detention centres outside the city of Copenhagen. The Northern Insularity is an exhibition uh, that collects a series of work that I did last uh, through the last 15 years, so to say. Um, since 2000 uh, and uh, all the way to today, I have been working with asylum politics as a, almost the primarily subject in my art production. Um, and I remember as a student at the Art Academy that I was interested in uh, information material that was uh, uh, officially presented in Red Cross uh, websites about uh, about the living conditions uh, and uh, the way they present themselves. And uh, what caught my interest back then uh, was the, this gap between the reality uh, on the ground level and, uh, and the way they describe themselves uh, uh, and uh, the way they were allowed to appear in the public eye, so to say. The information of, of this, uh, the information at that time was only available in Danish language uh, and uh, was aimed to, to almost to, to appear as uh, people who were staying at asylum centers could almost choose based on this information where and how to stay, which is of course uh, different, uh, different from the reality. According to the Christian Science Monitor, the Danish Refugee Council and the Danish Red Cross maintain these refugee camps, some which house 2,000 refugees of all kinds of ethnicities mixed together. The CSM also stated the Red Cross also spread refugee centres around Denmark rather than concentrating them in larger cities to avoid tensions with the Danish people. This is what Nerman wishes to represent in Northern Insularity by reinterpreting the concepts of asylum and identity. I started uh, to looking into, uh, into interior design of, uh, of asylum centre, how they, how they was composed. Uh, uh, and I, uh, I started to digging through some uh, all the photographies and some internet materials and uh, try to reconstruct some of those spaces uh, in three dimensional computer software. While chatting with an artist he shares his studio with, Norman points out the furniture used for recreating refugee rooms in Northern Insularity kept in a neat stack. 
He reiterates his exhibition directly involves ideas of asylum and identity and therefore revolves around politics in Denmark regarding immigration. During the 90s, I had been a teenager and I experienced the Danish Asylum Centre from the inside. Uh, so I know uh, about how serious, serious reality is. Uh, uh, that is in fact very different from a mainstream, uh, ma mainstream uh, version that uh, mass media and politicians uh, present to the wider population. Uh, back in the 19s, of course, and, and especially today. So, uh, but, but I have to emphasize that uh, my work is not autobiographical. All I do uh, is trying to, uh, through the art, um, to touch upon some aspect of our contemporary society uh, and its brutal real reality when it comes to asylum politics. As an excerpt from Nerman's Northern Insularity catalogue, the word insularity is a synonym for ignorance of other cultures, ideas and people outside one's own experience. He relates this word to its presence in societies in the northern part of Europe today. We can clearly con conclude that the position of asylum seeker um, is quite the opposite of the freedom. Um, it's more a state where the masses are controlled, regulated, categorized, numbered. Uh, and with regards to the Syrian people entering Europe lately, one can certainly say criminalized by the law first and foremost and by the mass media. So we have basically a legal system that create uh, this category and identity uh, for a certain gr group of people. Um, we have laws that uh, disable legal rights uh, and votes for the refugees, uh, first and foremost. The secondary, we have the system that uh, regulates their living conditions uh, by setting the physical frameworks uh, for uh, where to live, for how long to live uh, and how to live. Nerma maintains a certain level of privacy when discussing his experiences as a little boy fleeing to Denmark, but he recounts the necessity of his family situation to leave Bosnia and make a new home. We can, we can kind of uh, describe it in different ways today, but it was at that point of time necessity. We, ha we have to move. Um, so people move because uh, of the need, uh, not because of their free will. Living in Denmark for most of his life, Nerman has both Bosnian and Danish friends and personally doesn't feel torn between his national identities. And on idea that you have to choose rather uh, to choose between to be Bosnian and Danish, in my opinion, uh, you can be both or you can be nothing. It doesn't really matter. Uh, um, so uh, personally, I never felt this limbo uh, between to be Danish or or, or uh, Bosnian. Mazen Kasim, a Syrian movie maker and radio presenter who returned from Syria three years ago walks around one of his favourite nature parks near his home in Aarhus. He also wishes to make an impact on Danish society by presenting concepts revolving around Syrian children and refugee integration in his short film, Survivor. Uh, I was have show in my short documentary film the story about that documentary films that children uh, Syrian they they was have uh, dreams okay maybe we in in the school we, we was before years old years old uh, the teacher asked me uh, what you want to do in the future I'm answer I uh, I'm to be a doctor maybe but they can't do that in, in, in Syria, maybe, now. Uh, because uh, you see on the news the problems and that. Uh, but that the children, some, some children now, uh, going to Europe or America or Canada now, they continued that. Mazen studied theatre in Aarhus and showed his film Survivor recently in October this year at Godsbanen. Uh, we forget we uh, some some me. I'm, I'm a forget my my dreams in Syria. I'm back it again to to Denmark here, because I'm started again, and I'm 
sure, I'm started again here. Uh, that that the children maybe some some childrens now they uh, did in C or in the Syria or uh, uh, any anywhere and uh, but but some some childrens come to here come to here. In his spare time, he enjoys hanging out and talking in Arabic and Danish with some Danish friends, such as Matthias Olsen, who he met while working on a theatre production. One of their favourite venues is the Aarhus Bowling Hall. I was sort of a part of it. I was just helping a bit as a volunteer and then I, I met Mason. Uh, and I sort of, I speak Arabic and he speaks Arabic, thankfully, so we sort of... <laughs> Uh, found out that that was nice. Matthias is completing a degree in Arab and Islamic studies at Aarhus University and speaks Arabic almost fluently, making dialogue between him and Mazen easier. They sit and talk in both Arabic and Danish. <laughs> I mean, of course, when we talk in Arabic, we have some common frames and, and anecdotes and metaphors we can step into, which is quite nice when you have the language, but I don't think otherwise it's so important. But it helps. And it's funny for both of us, I think. <laughs> Although Matthias speaks in Arabic to Mazen, Mazen also shares the same Danish sense of humor and timekeeping as his friend. They often come to the bowling hall to watch a game, drink coffee, and even attempt to win a prize. He's really, in terms of humor and uh, ways of viewing what is fun and satire, we're really on the same level. So, uh, I guess also I'm, I'm one of those, I like to step over some boundaries sometimes of what you can say, and Mason is also like that, I know. So we, we sort of come along in that sense. That's, uh, I think that's a really, really important point. So we have a lot of fun we're usually when we're together. In terms of religious beliefs, Mazen is a Muslim living in Denmark. According to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Denmark, an estimation of around 4.8% of the total Danish population are Muslims and constitute the second largest religious society in Denmark. In a statement, the ministry mentions the deep concern in the prevailing climate of opinion concerning individuals of foreign backgrounds and the impact and use of xenophobic propaganda in politics. Mazen did not wish to comment on this matter and rarely discusses his faith much with his friends. I'm, uh, I'm Muslim, but uh, that, uh, to myself, uh, that, that between me and with my God, not not uh, speak with my friends about that subject. Um, I my friends, my my Danish friends, they they don't speak about that. Despite keeping a fairly low profile on his beliefs, Mazen shares a mutual friendship with his co-workers and friends who respect his religious practices. Also, as a Muslim living in Denmark, and I'm I have also in my work. Uh, friends they uh, in the morning they uh, say to me uh, not good morning they speak uh, say to me assalamu alaikum because they they know what uh, what that assalamu alaikum peace on you they they like it that they uh, they say that um, my chef they joke uh, in the morning why you speak assalamu alaikum we we say for him what salam alaikum and that like it like it also now all the uh, the peoples in my work they uh, speak in the morning salam alaikum salam alaikum they like it okay yes.